So at this point in the videos, I've explained to you two very powerful, very common tools of physics for solving problems. First, you've got Newton's laws, where you use forces to try to describe what's going on. And then you have the idea of energy, where you say that energy must be conserved, and you can use that idea to describe what's going on. And I'm going to teach you several more of them. But for now, I want to show both of the tools in use on kind of a complicated problem. So here's the problem. We've got a five kilogram block that's at the top of a ramp that's two meters high and four meters long and it's 30 degrees. And by the way, you can do a little bit of trig to confirm this, but I just thought I'd give you those values. And we want to know how fast it's going at the bottom. So we're going to use forces first to solve it and then we're going to use energy to solve it. So first up, I'm going to solve this problem using forces, which is stuff that we learned several videos ago. So I'm going to go through it very fast, but you can have a chance to pause the video if you need to look at what I'm doing. So if I draw a force diagram, I've got a force of gravity of 50, and I need to break that up into x and y. So I run the trig, and fgx is 25, fgy is 43.3. I can conclude that the net force is therefore 25 newtons, so I get an acceleration of 5 using Newton's second law. Now that we know our acceleration, we turn to our variables of awesomeness to try to figure out how much time it took to get down the ramp in order to know what the final velocity is at the bottom of the ramp. With the help of some kinematic equations, I find that the final velocity of the block at the bottom is 6.3 meters per second. I'll give you a couple seconds to pause the video and study, and then I'm going to use the energy method to solve. So here we go. Same problem, but now I'm going to use energy to solve it. So first, I set up my tables with all three kinds of energy, along with the total for the start of the problem, which is when the block's at the top, and the end of the problem when the block's at the bottom. At the top of the ramp, the block has no kinetic energy and no elastic energy, because there's no spring, so it's all gravitational. And that's just MGH, which gives us 100 joules of energy at the top for a total energy of 100 joules in the problem. Now at the end, when the block's at the bottom of the ramp, since it's at the bottom, it has no gravitational energy and there was never a spring involved, which means that the kinetic energy at the bottom of the ramp had better equal 100 since the total energy must still remain 100. So all 100 of those joules transformed from gravitational energy at the top to kinetic energy when it moved to the bottom. If I plug in 100 joules of energy and 5 kilograms of mass, I get a final velocity of 6.3 meters per second, which is the exact same answer we got before. I'll let you pause for a few seconds and study. So now that we've solved it both ways, I want to give you a chance to kind of just take in a little bit what just happened and both of the methods and sort of their strengths and weaknesses. I would say for forces, the, you have to know your physics a little bit better. There's more chances to make a mistake, but the steps are probably maybe a little bit smaller. It's more one thing at a time. Whereas with energy, I feel like if you really enjoy being organized on a problem and making tables and that sort of thing, energy is going to be a really good method for you. So they're both different and you can use whatever you want. And not every problem is going to work with energy and not every problem is going to work with forces. But usually I like to lean over to this side. I, th I think energy is just the winner. If something's asking what an object's final velocity is, I love energy because you rarely have to do any trig and usually the equations are simpler so there's less chances to make mistakes.